Hey there folks, welcome to Spectrum Policies. How about music, movies, art, and culture? And today we're going to be talking about the newest album from Tyler Farr, titled Suffer in Peace. You know, it's always a little bit fascinating to see what happens to certain artists after the trend they rode to stardom falters or fails completely. In many cases, the artists, they'll simply just drop off the radar, especially if they were transparently a product of the label looking just to cash in quickly. Sometimes they'll manage to stick around for maybe one more awkward, kind of uncomfortable album trying to find footing in that same formula, or maybe just with a slight differentiation, only to be looked upon as has-beens or wannabes. Some, especially they jumped on the trend midway through their careers. After the trend ends, they'll simply go back to what they do normally. Normally, with singles from that trendier record hastily wiped from memory and from most live shows unless they absolutely have to play them. And yet sometimes you'll get artists who are able to roll with the punches, start off riding a trend, and yet able to transcend it in the end to become staples in the genre. In other words, actually having a career afterwards. And here's the thing. You can't assume that it's just going to be the ones that are the most successful at that time that will end up in that last category. Let's be honest. What gets popular isn't always the material with the most quality or longevity overall, but that with the most definitive image or flash or energy. And that seldom translates well into the long term, especially if your artistic persona is so tied to that image and that image ages badly. As such, it's typically the artists that are a little bit more restrained or in control of their image that can ride their debut albums to greater success. Or, of course, that you actually have a distinctive artistic identity, but that might be hoping for a little bit too much here. But could I be wrong here? For an example, let's consider Tyler Farr, a definitive B-lister in the bro country scene who released Redneck Crazy in 2013, his debut album, in the heat of the whole trend, and rode the absolutely terrible titular single to nearly the top of the charts. Now, I reviewed that album, and I remember not being kind to it whatsoever, but truth be told, I can barely remember Redneck Crazy at all. I mean, I remember the singles, I remember thinking that Tyler Farr has a good enough voice to do it well. Turns out the guy actually had some classical training, which is not all that common to see in country music music, but his material often came across as leering or creepy when it wasn't boring or forgettable. Hill with production that was just all over the place, I was prepared to just write Tyler Farr off. But then I heard his lead-off single, A Guy Walks Into a Bar, and I was struck by its intensity and frustration and the realization that gruff anger might actually be a solid fit for Tyler Farr. We don't actually have a lot of that in mainstream country these days. And considering the rumors that this record was supposed to be a little bit rougher and heavier, I was actually interested in covering it, whereas you couldn't convince me to cover a sophomore album from other bro country acts like Thomas Red, given what his leadoff single was. So, what did we get with Suffer in Peace? Well, I'll give Tyler Farr this. It's probably the best possible pivot record he could have possibly made. Nearly pitching the entire bro country template out the window for something that's rougher, angrier, and almost a fair bit more mature. I'm not going to say that it's perfect or even a great album. The tone and the writing, it's still uneven, and the fact that Tyler Farr is on a mainstream label means that he and his songwriters aren't allowed to go as dark as they really should have on this album, but talk about a major improvement in nearly everywhere that it counts. So, yeah, for as much as I'd say that Tyler Farr, he actually made a pretty good album here, one that I'd almost recommend. So, okay, what was the change here? How did he manage to pull all this off? Well, part of it is Tyler Farr himself. His voice always reminded me a little bit of Vince Gill with a huskier, raspier edge. And on Suffer in Peace, it actually gives him more room to open up his pipes with more presence and power. He'll never be a Zach Brown or a Randy Hauser or a Keith Urban or Chris Young in terms of raw charisma, but he definitely works when he's in his lane, which is the second major improvement with this album. One of the reasons that Redneck Crazy just didn't work at all was that he was playing in the typical generally lightweight bro country mold but this record proves that Tyler Farr he never belonged in that lane in the first place with his voice he works a lot better than the gruff rough edged country that characterizes Jason Aldean's harsher material which makes Jason Aldean's appearance on this album make a lot of sense and the two play off each other with the sort of understated badass camaraderie that I'll admit does kind of work for me even if it does imply that Tyler Farr put his car into a ditch because he might have had a few too many before getting on the road I mean not cool dude that just no and it helps centers that the writing has improved considerably too, most notably in the shift in tone. The songs are darker with much more of a sour, bitter edge thanks to the minor keys. It's a much better fit for Far's emotional intensity. It helps that the framing of these tracks is pretty solid too, or at least complicated in the way that it should be. I've already talked about A Guy Walks Into A Bar, which is rapidly becoming one of my favorite mainstream country songs of 2015 thus far, for the deft subversion of the typical Guy Walks Into A Bar joke into what it would really be like to be that guy with a healthy dose of reality behind it. The alcohol-drenched depression of I Don't Even Want This Beer takes a layer from an I Love McConan song of all things and twists it into the real reason why most people would go out drinking on a Tuesday night. And the title track gives Tyler Farr an avenue to just get away and focus on himself. More just, maybe even just considering that option. But that sort of pain, it just doesn't fade easily. And he'd just prefer to take the mature step and figure it 
it and himself out along the way, suffering peace on his own. And honestly, I kind of respect that. It's sort of what I do. Hell, even more straightforward relationship and hookup tries like withdrawals and criminal. They embrace their darker edges. And while neither of them are great songs, they are a better fit for his voice. And if the album had stuck to this route, I probably would have been blown away with it instead of just modestly impressed. But as it is between those songs with some raw emotion and passion and anger, we get some that are a fair bit weaker. You get your patriotic bro country checklist song with C-O-U-N-T-R-Y. And incidentally, saying mother trucking, that's just lame. If you're gonna go for a swaggering country rock, at least go all the way and say fuck for God's sakes. And then a slightly more tasteful version of that song on why we live here. Then you have the salute to rougher living on Raised to Pray, which has some religious iconography in a way that doesn't feel overbearing or tasteless, which is kind of the point. And then you have the riff on Uptown Girl with Poor Boy. Frustratingly, we also get Better in Boots, a lazy bro country riff that could have felt like a leftover from Redneck Crazy and nobody would have noticed. It's all the more proof that Tyler Fart never belonged in that lane to begin with. And this record would have been a fair bit stronger if that song was cut because he's just not a good fit for that sort of song. But now we get to the area that hasn't exactly improved at all since Tyler Fart's debut and it's the real disappointment here. The instrumentation and the production. And by not improved, I mean it's just as uneven as ever. As much as there's more steel guitar and chunky riffs that show at least a commitment to more of a country rock sound, we still get the interjection of lightweight stuttering drum machines that don't fit nearly as well, even with the spacier steel guitar elements. Take the drum machines on withdrawals. Instead of the drums acting as support for the riffs, they chop them up and disrupt the overall flow of the track. And worse still, the drum machines are so thin and underweight that it neuters the overall groove. It's better on Criminal, but the introduction of thicker twang on Better in Boots feels so completely out of place compared with that incredibly stiff drum machine and clap percussion, it just doesn't work. I said the same thing about Blake Shelton's Bring Up the Sunshine, say the same thing here. And the frustrating thing is, just like Redneck Crazy, it's inconsistent. Most of this album's actually pretty standard country rock with organic drumming, electric guitars, and enough steel guitar and acoustic elements to make it sound like it's got a country flavor. And just like Farr's last album, it feels like there's an electric guitar melody is nowhere near as prominent as it should be in the mix to drive the song. Like on Race to Prey, where that opening riff, it's pretty good, but it feels way too quiet to have any impact. And the sad fact is that there are some good melodies here. Sure, I don't even want this beer. It has some electronic elements, but the integration is more tasteful and subdued and understated against a good somber melody. And there just isn't that much of an excuse beyond lack of effort on the part of the producers why so much of the instrumentation just doesn't have more to it. Because the sad fact is that the production isn't so much bad as it is underwhelming. If you gave most of these songs to Jason Aldean, what would really change? It doesn't help Tyler Fart develop a unique instrumental identity, and that is a problem and probably what would keep him confined to the B-list. And that's why I'm going to say something that I don't normally say when I came to covering mainstream country. Tyler Farr should go independent. I mean, finish up his contract with Columbia Nashville and step towards the indie scene. Hell, he's already working with Jason Aldean, signed to Broken Bow Records. He'd be a welcome fit for it. At least send him up with the producers and songwriter who can give his material the fire that it deserves. Because overall, I do like Suffer in Peace by Tyler Farr, but it's a record that feels compromised. It has a fair bit of unrealized potential because it has to play to the radio. Where songs like A Guy Walks Into a Bar, it doesn't fit on the radio. It's a welcome step of quality, but it's a little bit angrier. It doesn't really fit with the rest of the Florida Georgia line and the Luke Bryan and the Cole Swindle. Still, it definitely is a big improvement, which earns a strong 6 out of 10 for me and definitely a recommendation. Especially if you want to see a bro country artist moving in the right direction. He's not quite at solid quality yet, but I got a good feeling about Tyler Farr going forward in the future. He'll be a guy to watch in the next few years, so overall, check this out. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching. If you'd like to like and subscribe, I'd be more than grateful. If there's anything else I might be able to do to improve my presentation or anything else that I might be able to cover over the course of the next couple of days, I'd be more than happy to give him a listen. Until then, I'm Mark, you're watching Spectrum Pulse, and I'll see you next time.